Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. So welcome, Teresa Sims. We are so delighted you decided to join in our We Choose to Thrive series. Thanks, Becky. It's been an honor, definite honor to be <laughs> with you it's and all the other ladies. It's my honor, too. Tell us a little bit about the story of your past. Just kind of highlight what you've been through so that we can, you can give our listeners a little bit of an idea, and then we'll go into what you've done to heal. Okay. Um, I was actually uh, born cripple, uh, which my legs were twisted, but were repaired right after birth. So that was one issue. But then my father was a very abusive alcoholic. My mother was not the world's most put together woman. So, And my older sister was one of my main sources of torment. Uh, she physically abused me when my parents weren't around and she was my caregiver when before school and after school. So that, that made it a very difficult thing. I used to have to run out of the house without food to eat, crying, not enough clothes to keep me warm in the winter time, all that sort of thing. And uh, my father would, um, in his own way of dealing out abuse, would uh, uh, sometimes nail beer, cut, beer bottle caps onto a board, and that was one of his favorite means of torment for me, was to have to kneel on those uh, mm. for an hour or so at a time. And, you know, if I slouched, then, you know, you got the leather belt across the rear end to straighten you up and all this sort of thing. But uh, so that, that was basically, you know, what my childhood looked like, was just, you know, constant... Uh, never knowing if you were safe, never knowing, you know, what, what was going to bring the next beer bottle, what was going to, you know, what was going to happen. So, and uh, no loving support from anyone um, except my grandfather. He didn't know the whole story. So, so eventually, uh, you know, I got out of that and married the first person that seemed to wanted me. So, that wasn't also very good. It was, uh, you know, you kind of take the first way out and... That's a pretty typical. Yeah. And we and, what we know. Yeah, and I didn't realize he was abusive. And uh, there's there were three times where my nose has been broken. Um, you know, first time by backhand and, you know... So anyway, it, you know, it went on. And uh, after the physical abuse stopped... Then it became mental and emotional or psychological and, you know, manipulating me to the point where I couldn't walk across a room of, of people because I was so afraid someone would see me. And, you know, I was never acting properly. I spoke incorrectly. I did, you know. And look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, after I took, I was with that relationship for 25 years wow. and I actually lost track of who I was completely. My only break was my grandmother passed away and left me some money. And that was how I managed to afford to be able to get away. Um, I went to the college for the first time in my life, met a lovely man and, uh, Goodness. Year and a, yeah, a year and a half later, we were married. I had graduated college, had my dream job exactly where I wanted in human resources, you know, everything. And then eight months later, I was almost killed in a car accident trying to get home from work one day in a terrible snowstorm. So, you know, there, there's a lot of misunderstanding that goes along with that, too. Like, I wasn't you couldn't see any injuries on me. Everything was soft tissue. My neck has been described like a bowling ball on a piece of spaghetti. Yeah. So it's very, you know, very fragile. And no one understands what dealing with chronic pain is like or what it looks like or feels like. So there's a lot of misunderstanding that way. But over the past 
nine years, it's 10 years next month since the accident, I've actually taken that time uh, to heal, to grow, to educate. Because I had a brain injury, I like to learn. And to me, that's keeping my, my brain active, my brain sharp. I, two years ago, I started writing a book myself. And that was my main source of healing. Very cool. When I wrote my That's, story. Is that your main healing brought you where, where you are today in your healing process? That was one of the most important ones. But I actually dealt with or worked with a hypnotherapist. And we did some uh, early childhood work. And that was incredible because it brought out a safe place for my little being, my little girl who I was way back when. Uh, I gave her a safe place to grow up, and I gave her everything that I was missing as a child. That was instrumental. That was in incredible. I had no idea the power that that would hold, and and between that and working with a, uh, an authorship coach who is an incredible coach in his own right, personal development coach, uh, through him, he recommended me to his uh, coaching programs. So I, uh, I started a year ago uh, taking the courses to become a personal empowerment coach. Very, and, very good. Uh, between that, um, writing my book, educating myself, finding my, my own personal power, and actually recognizing who I am, what gifts I have to bring to this world, Aside from the, the training that you took, the coaching, the, these different things, was there any kind of books that you read that you felt that really made a massive impact on you? Well, I've read a few. Um, some of them I can't remember right off the top of my head, but there was one that was called Buddha's Brain. And I was actually doing a course study with, with my hypnotherapist uh, with that book. And it was all about retraining your brain and retraining mind to think in different ways and I would really recommend that book to a lot of people okay. um, but I also uh, one other thing that I found was very healing and very meditative which I also do meditation and yoga uh, was doodling doodling and doodling okay. yeah just you know getting into a mindset where you're just concentrating on the the pen on the paper and it doesn't matter what you draw how you draw what color you use it's just the form of you're taking your mind off of what's burdening you or what has bothered you, and you just focus on that. And That's pretty cool because I've, I've interviewed a lot of women for this book, the We Choose to Thrive book, mm -hmm. and each of us have had so many different ways of healing and the resources. There's art, there's dance, there's yoga there's writing there's all the different there's no one way that's right or wrong for anybody it's what finds what works for you and it may be a combination of all of it or maybe one or two different things but there's so many different modalities for being able to write and and I mean to not I mean to, to being able to heal excuse me there's so many different modalities for being able to heal that that it's really beautiful to see um, what there is available to us, and that's part of what we choose to thrive is we're talking we're talking to the hearts of other people, of women and men, to say it's a choice you have and make conscious effort to heal because that changes the whole vibrational frequency of our world. It changes everything. Absolutely, and uh, you know it was. Uh, it was interesting, as I was finishing writing my book, uh, my husband bought me a little stuffed unicorn. And because my safe place for my little girl to grow up was a walled castle garden, and in that garden was a unicorn. Uh -huh. And that actually um, represents rainbows and the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and dreaming and gifts and, you know, whatever you can gift yourself is, you know, I think you can gift yourself a brilliant future if you choose to. If you choose to. Yeah. So what would you, words of advice would you share with somebody just starting down this healing journey? I would tell them to be slow, 
Be gentle with yourself. Be loving. Learn the art of self-compassion. That's something I'm still working with. So I think a lot of us are. Yeah. And be forgiving. Because not necessarily to yes to who caused the abuse, but also to yourself. Because you have to start in yourself first. Yes. And that's where the growing and the healing begins. And I think that's the most important thing is just be loving, be kind, be gentle. Don't push. Because pushing does not help. It only makes things worse. That's right. And, and part of the process of learning to love yourself is to pay attention to if you, f if you feel like you're doing a little too much, back off. You know, yeah. pay attention. And the key is to love yourself. Absolutely. And there's one other piece of advice I would give is uh, be very cautious with your relationships. Just because people are family does not mean they need to be in your life. True. Very true. Uh, there are it's, relationships. Those who we associate with will make a big difference in how we, well we heal. Absolutely. And, and the minute you start to choose who is right for your world, and who is wrong for your world, then your healing can begin as well. And, I mean, I've had to do that with my family, my entire family. Um, and, me too. Yeah, and even my children at some points. So it's, it's terrible, it's difficult, but it's important because you can always build the relationships later on if you choose, but you have to look after yourself first. Absolutely. If we don't take care of ourselves first, we have nothing to give. Absolutely. That's right. Very true. What possessed you to participate in this We Choose to Thrive series? I actually was um, very intrigued by the work you're doing. Uh, you were recommended by a very dear friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Joe is an incredible lady. And I think your mission that you're on is exactly mirroring what I want to do. Um, I think we have messages that we need to give out and we yep. need to get out there. And the more lives and souls we can touch, the better off the world will be. So, well, I think there could be millions of us out there to give a message um, because there are so many that are suffering and there's so many that have gone to the grave without ever dealing with it or even speaking out speaking up and, and claiming their own truth. And I feel that unless we lock arms and support each other, support the message that needs to be um, told, there can't be this, that we, we have more effect that way by locking arms and working together to make this, this come to be than if we hoarded the message to ourselves. I would agree, and my main reason for wanting to do this is to My give dogs are hungry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's to give back. Yes. Because I have found my path, and speaking of one of the voices that was never heard was my grandmother, and she was almost sold as a child bride after she was, got pregnant by her stepfather. They were, she was an embarrassment. So she went to the highest bidder or whoever would accept, you know, her and the child. So my, my purpose was to speak up and give my grandmother's soul some rest. Mm. And in doing that, I'm also giving myself that. And I can give other, if I can give other women that or other men that, I, I don't care. Either one, everyone needs healing. If I can do that, then my mission on this earth is, happening and that's, that's all I need to do is to give back. I'm, I'm finding more of us that are in our age bracket that we are in yes. are starting to say, you know what, it's time to stand up, it's time to speak up, it's time to find our, our own inner truth and find our inner strength and power. And I would agree. We're doing here. I would agree because there's there's future generations that need to be told of what's happened. It, and if we can let them know, uh, then we can hopefully prevent something 
happening to them. Right. And I'm doing this because I want my granddaughter to grow up safe. Right. We don't want our children or grandchildren and future generations to ever go through this. And if we can create the awareness and create the, the change the tide, what's happening because of that awareness, promote the healing, it will, it will prevent many more in the future from experiencing these horrible things. You yeah, know, I would agree. You know, it's, it's changing. One thing that my father, who was the perpetrator with me, um, that he said not long be he took his life at the end. Um, not long before then, he said, you've changed the pattern in our family. And I asked him, well, what do you mean? And he says, you're not abusive to your children. You, you really have changed the tide for us here. That was, you know, that was his gift to me. And, and for, for him to say that. He had done, he, it, that was his gift. Oh, that's incredible. For him to say that, it, it must have taken a lot of courage. Yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah. thank you so much for choosing to participate in this. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.